morning. Welcome to St. Anne's. My name is Donna. I'll be your lector for this liturgy as we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are ever so grateful for your presence as we gather as a community of faith in prayer, and we thank you. We are being called to be the messenger of God, to open to receive the heart of another, to be open to the grace and love of our God, and to be a humble servant in the way, the truth, and the life of Christ. Our celebrant and homilist today is Father Mike. Good morning. Um, I would like to bring your attention to the new setting that we're starting with. Um, it's a Mass of Renewal uh, by William Gokelman and David Kaufman. And the booklets you will find in the pews that look like this, but much smaller. Thank you. Our opening hymn today is number 639, This Day God Gives Me. Please stand. <laughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's grace, peace, and love be with each of you. And with your spirit. Well, yesterday we ended another month. Today we turn the calendar to a new month, a beautiful month. Trees will be changing, harvest will be going on, so many blessings. As we look back on the month that just has disappeared, let's ask ourselves the question Have I utilized and appreciated the gifts God gave me during that month, how many times have I said thank you? Lord Jesus, you emptied yourself to become human. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. In Christ Jesus, you were obedient unto death. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are exalted in the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, you take 
take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One. You Manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed, and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life, since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed. He, surely shall, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory, Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out for his own interest, not for his own interests, 
but for those of others. Having you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not, reg did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of these two did his father's will? And they answered, The first. And Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in a way of righteousness, you did not believe him. But tax collectors and prostitutes did, yet... Even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe. The Gospel of the Lord. To you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Father Kevin and I went to the Vatican, two things happened that I would share with you today. The first was typical Kevin. We were going through the halls of the Basilica, and there was a hall that was roped off, and the sign saying, do not enter. Well, that's all you had to do for Kevin was to say, do not enter. So immediately he took the cord off and said, let's go. I said, Kevin, you're going to be thrown out of here. Wouldn't that be something he said I could go back and tell the people of St. Anne's they threw me out of the Vatican? <laughs> but the next day, we went to a little church that was right at the entrance of where the employees of the Vatican went to Mass. And the church was entitled St. Anne's. We were going to supper, and we saw it, and we stopped in, said a prayer. Then I left after about five minutes, and I waited for him. It was almost 20 minutes before he came out of the church. I said, what were you doing? I'm starving. He said, I was praying for my people at St. Anne's. I love them, and I asked God to bless them. At that time, I was not helping out here. I didn't start coming on weekends except after Kevin died. 
But when he was dying, and I asked him, what about the people of St. Anne's? And his answer is, I have shared with you before. He said simply, I can do more now from where I am than I could when I was around here. And so here we are without a pastor for a year, a chance to recoup, review, celebrate, and bring life to the parish. The COVID destroyed parishes. The scandal destroyed parishes. It's time to build back up. It's a new chapter. I often ask myself, how did the bishop ask an 86-year-old man to come here for a year? How did the bishop come up with the idea of sending a young priest, Father Malachi, a gentle giant, to be part of this communion, this community? And I think of our having our own Deacon Bob, whose whole life has been in this parish and in this village. And I think back and ask myself the question and I go, yep, it's Kevin. He's behind it. So as we walk this year, we have an opportunity to look at what's happened and how help, help to bring back life and laughter and faith and celebration. A parish is a family. My first pastor used to say to us, there were four associates, he used to say to us, this is a parish family. If somebody hurts, we're there. Oh, you don't just say the funeral, all of us go to the funeral. Oh, you don't just say a wedding, all of us go to it. If our people are celebrating, we're part of a family. If our people are suffering, we're there, all of us, because we're all part of the family. A parish is really the extended family of the family we have at home. The parish buttresses what parents try to teach their children, the values. We know that statement that was used very popular a few years ago, it takes a village to bring up a child. Well, coming together each week, hearing the good news, hearing Jesus speak to us through the gospel, coming to the table and taking the great gift of his love into our hearts, it buttresses daily life. The gospel is called good news, and we hear good news versus bad news in our society. Every time we come to Mass, that gospel is encouraging us is strengthening in us, is giving us such parameters of respecting each other and of bringing peace. And so our parish is like a family. We all know that a parish is, or a family is where everyone's face and names are known, where life histories are shared, where birthdays are remembered and dreams told, where memories are kept and absences mourned. The parish family is a, a number of families coming together where beginnings and endings happen from first cries to last sighs, where the extended family gathers to celebrate, to mourn, to relieve oneself of sin and guilt, where we meet Jesus at the table, where good news, bad news is Good news, not bad news, is shared. Where we're reminded that it's not what we do, but we are, who we are is important. We're reminded, we are reminded of our identity, that we are beloved by God, despite our mistakes. As a family, however, there are many tasks to be done. Each of us can have a role. In your own unique family, you divide up the duties. Somebody's going to clear the table. Somebody's going to put the dishes in the dishwasher. Somebody's going to take the dishes out of the dishwasher. 
and so on and so on. So too in a parish family, there are so many things that need to be done to keep a parish family alive, to keep a parish family happy, and to keep a parish rich. And so during this time at the beginning of the school year, we look at the various opportunities that we have in this parish for the talents that people have to bring to the family of the parish. This parish has so many gifted people, so many talented people. Today we just ask you to think, would you be willing to offer part of your talent to building up this parish? You've all seen the various opportunities that were already offered from being lectors, Eucharistic ministers, there's 20, at least 20 things that need to be done. For example, making the sanctuary uh, special during the special feast day, uh, someone with artistic abilities that just makes things warm, that makes our home very special in a unique and a special way. Those that volunteer list, and Deacon Bob will mention it. On the other hand, I think of my mother who, when we were all young, was asked by the parish to do some things for the parish. And I'll never forget her saying, I'll be very happy to after my responsibility is done in bringing up my children. I say to you who are families, who are busy, who are overwhelming, don't feel like you need to volunteer. You have all you have to do with bringing up doing the duties of your family life. We support that. We don't want to be one more agency that's calling out and saying, come. When the time comes, you can do it. I don't want to put guilt on anyone. I'm just inviting those who can and who are willing. I just would end with a story. After World War II in England, there was a whole block that had been bombed. And on that block had been the parish church and the parish rectory and the convent. Totally destroyed. While the Americans were waiting to be brought back to America, they were put to work cleaning that particular block, taking away the rubble. As they did, they found in the middle of the church a statue who wasn't completely destroyed. It was the statue of the Sacred Heart. They decided they would put it back together and put it in the middle of that block and put uh, a saying under it, this is in memory of the American soldiers who spent their time here in England. They had a date set for the dedication. All the important dignitaries, both military and ecclesiastical, were coming to it. But the night before, as they were finishing up the statue, they realized that the hands were so destroyed they couldn't be put on. What to do? One young soldier said, I'll take care of it. Don't anybody worry. So the next day when they all gathered and they let the clothing, the cloth over the statue down, there still were no hands. But there was a sign on either arm with a rope that said, I have no hands but yours. And that's what this whole appeal is today. That you have gifts. And if you have those gifts, and if you have the time, would you offer those gifts to help build up this community? Because Jesus really counts on us to be his hands and his feet and his love. As we once again remember the many gifts that are given to us in our faith, we recite and we call as we say the creed. I believe, I believe in, one, in God, one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all things, things visible, visible and, and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are called to discern God's will in our lives and follow it as Jesus did. As we work to better understanding our relationships, we ask from our hearts for our needs and the needs of others. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, our bishops, and our priests who are our shepherds, let their work to restore life in our hearts be rooted in the spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local and national elected officials, may they work to create a free and available environment, especially for those in the margins of society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For increased vocations within our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the elderly, that they may become teachers of tenderness so that their experience and their wisdom may help young people as they look toward the future, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of St. Anne's, may we all open ourselves up to the grace and the glory of our God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who are sick, may they embrace the comfort of our God, especially for Mike Sessler and for those who are listed in our prayer list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And for all of those who have died, may they find eternal rest in God's kingdom, especially for Samuel Leonardo, for whom this Mass is offered today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And our sanctuary lamp will be burning this week in loving memory of Ina Davis. And we now pray for the intentions that we all offer in the silence of our own hearts. And we pray to the Lord. Lord, we hear our prayer. We also remember tomorrow in the Vatican, we will begin a synod for the month of October. It can have tremendous impact on our lives. The purpose of the Synod is to help address the needs of the world, the needs of our people, and uh, to accept in modern time how to make these values more important and be able to look at the spirit leading the church. So that will go on for one month and then convene, reconvene again next October. So let us remember this Synod and prayers it could have tremendous effects <clears throat> on the good of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Faithful God, daily you draw us into your mystery. Grant that your spirit prompts us to ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 625, Tend the Ground.
as God provides our every need, with grateful hearts let us receive these gifts of love and make return to bless the world, to bless the song of hope. The rocks cry out and praises ring. Rise up and sing. Rise up and sing. We till the earth. We tend the ground. Sowing hope and peace where none is found. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessings may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of all, sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that part, by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace, the joy, and the love of the Lord be with each of you. And your spirit. Let us now offer each other signs of Christ.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
So you might ask yourself, well, how can I sign up for a ministry here at St. Anne's? Uh, so we put out a lot of, of our needs in the bulletin a week or two ago. And uh, by this weekend, by this coming weekend on our website, and then at the entrances to the parishes, we'll uh, have descriptions for all of those ministries so you can see what they are. And then we'll have a sign up genius on our website that you can sign up for, or if you're not savvy with electronics, uh, Patty at the office can take your name and what you'd like to do, and then we'll, we'll go from there with whoever signs up for what, but I appreciate it. Um, RCIA, we're gonna start next Monday, not this coming Monday, but next Monday on October 9th, 6 p.m. in the parish office. For anybody who would like to know more about our Catholic faith or is missing a sacrament and would like to pick that up this year, or just wants to know more about who we are, or maybe you know somebody that um, would like to join the Catholic faith, and uh, they'd be more than welcome to attend also. Uh, Eucharistic ministry training on Tuesday, this Tuesday, October 3rd, 6.30, right here in the church, if that's something you would like to do. Um, faith formation for the 7 through 10 grades starts today at 4 o'clock, this evening right here in the church. Again, that's the uh, seven through 10 grades. And then the most important announcement for all of our friends, uh, the blessing of the animals. St. Francis Day is coming up October 4th and we'll do blessing of the animals here in the parking lot after the 11 o'clock mass next Sunday. Thank you. And let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. The love and courage of God. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful new month. You too, Father. Our final hymn is number 415 In Christ Alone. Okay.